So, Adam Lambert is one of those artists that I look at and just think, we could have had something really good here if only things were managed properly. But alas, we don't always get what we want. But yeah, he had enough momentum and support from fans and his record label right from the beginning to have a solid career. So his floppation, um kind of low-key pisses me off. Adam's professional career really took off when he was featured on the eighth season of American Idol where he came in second place but to the public he was basically the winner, he was the favorite. He was clearly a superstar so he was quickly signed to 19 recordings and RCA records and released his debut studio album in November of 2009 for your entertainment just seven months after the show had ended and pretty instantly it was a success debuting at number three on the Billboard 200 charts with first week sales of nearly 200,000 copies. Not only that, out of all the singles, which were like five, he had two top 40 singles, What Do You Want From Me, which peaked at number 10 and was certified platinum in many countries, and another single, If I Had You, which peaked at number 30. So yeah, not bad for a debut era. I mean, it does help that he was featured on literally the biggest show for music in the world, but it's still impressive. However, his second album, Trespassing, released in May of 2012 would not be nearly as successful as his debut album. So here's the thing, Trespassing achieved something incredible at the time of its release, debuting at number one on the Billboard 200 charts, making Adam Lambert the first ever openly gay artist in history to achieve this. Not even the Elton John got this record. But where For Your Entertainment sold 198,000 copies in its first week, Trespassing sold just 77,000 copies in its first week. And while for your entertainment had multiple platinum and gold certifications all over the world, Trispassin has none. It hasn't even sold up to 300,000 copies yet. Yikes. And out of all the three singles that were released from the Trispassin album, only one, which was the lead single, Better Than I Know Myself, managed to even chart on Billboard at number 76. So what happened? Why did Adam Lambert's second album not achieve even half of what the debut album did? And why did he experience the sophomore slump? Let's find out. Number one, his sexuality. I'm not saying people who were watching American Idol didn't know or even have a feeling of what Adam was. I mean, look at him, it's pretty obvious. But to be confronted with it probably made a lot of them uncomfortable, which then led to opportunities being taken away from him. Because in November 2009, the same month that Adam Lambert released his debut album, he performed at the American Music Awards where he kissed the male bassist, you know, the guy who plays the bass guitar, and he grabbed the crotch of another man while he was performing, and this sent the conservatives into a rage. And they filed a lot of complaints to the FCC. But the thing about that whole situation is the FCC's time frame is from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., and the American Music Awards happened after 10 p.m. So the FCC couldn't really do anything about it, but the complaint still had an effect on Adam because he had a bunch of shows scheduled up with ABC, the channel, and they canceled all of them. He was going to be on Good Morning America, that was canceled. Jimmy Kimmel Live, that was also canceled. And The Clock's New Year's Rockin' Eve, it's a show that they do at the end of every year, like during Christmas, that also was canceled. All of these could have been great opportunities to get him more exposure in the general public, but this was taken away from him. And I think it really affected the second album because when the first album was released. If he's not putting his face out there, if he's not letting people know of his existence, like his second album probably is not going to do as well because for the second album, he did not have such a massive audience like the way he did with American Idol. Number two, confused album direction. If you listen to the Trespass on album, it's pretty clear that it's split into two different halves. Track one to seven is very much dance club type of music and eight to 12 are more pop rock focused. And he even talked about this on the RuPaul podcast episode and according to him, the label didn't really know what direction they wanted him to go on in regards to this album. So they had him do a bunch of sessions with a few different producers and during the whole process, they kind of changed it again. So he kind of had like two different sounds, but listening to the album, it kind of works. Like the album doesn't come off as 
half assed But how I think this effect of the album was in its single choices and how it was promoted, which is what I'm going to talk about in my next point. Number three, poor single choices and bad promotion. From what I've read about the rollout of this album on the internet, it was kind of heavy. They actually put a bit of budget behind the rollout of this album. Not too much, you know, but there was definitely some budget over there. But based on the single choices, it seemed like they did not really do a good job at convincing people to prepare and be excited for the new album from Adam. Don't get me wrong, Better Than Myself, which was the lead single, is a fine song. But it's not really lead single material, you know? Never Close Our Eyes, the second single, would have been better suited as a lead single. It's a really good song. It's kind of generic, but I think it would have been a good choice. Another song, Cuckoo, which is the second track on the album, would have been great. It's so good. Yeah, those two songs would have been better options than Better Than I Know Myself. So yeah, my whole thing about this is if they knew what they wanted this album to represent in Adam Lambert's career, they could have promoted it properly with the right singles, but they didn't. And so not a lot of attention was brought to the album, which then led it to low-key kind of flop. To this date, like I said, it hasn't even sold up to 300,000 copies worldwide. I saw on Wikipedia that it had only sold up to 150,000 copies, not even what his debut album sold in its first week. That's kind of sad. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. This is obviously not an exhaustive list of everything that went down with this album, but I think this paints a pretty solid picture of what potentially went wrong with this album. I would definitely consider this a sophomore slump. Anyway, thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!